Hi, this is 131 Kimber again. As a regular YouTube user who does things more than just search for information on organized stalking or directed energy weapons, I'm often confronted with does even such technology exist and why would they use it on anybody here in America or elsewhere? I would like to point out an article that I found that was written by torturedinamerica.org who is also a targeted individual of these heinous crimes. I went to your website. I was unable to locate the email address that you said was at the bottom of the page. I searched many areas, couldn't find it. So if you have an issue with my use of your article, please contact me and I will remove it. But basically I'm using it because I'm trying to help those who are not victims of this understand the seriousness of the situation and the reality of the weapon. This article is, is titled U.S. Air Force Gone Wild. The Military Connection to Directed Energy Weapons and Organized Stalking. In it, it states the quasi-military and police state, which has ensued since the horrific attacks of 9-11, a domestic terrorism campaign known as the Targeted Individual Program, has emerged. Essentially, a state-sponsored terrorism and torture operation, where an individual is thrust into a midriff of psychological and often physical warfare tactics, including organized stalking and constant overexposure to directed energy weapons being carried out by the U.S. Air Force. The targeted individual program appears to be heavily supported by the U.S. military and largely implemented by the U.S. Air Force. The victim in this state-sponsored terrorism operation, known as a targeted individual, is subjected to unrelenting violation of basic civil, constitutional, and human rights, often subjected to long-term physical torture and poisoning through the abuse of invisible and silent overexposure to electromagnetic radiation via the directed energy weapons. The ranks of the perpetrators are filled with right-wing fanatics that believe they are above the law and seem to hold enough power and, and influence in our society to disguise their domestic terrorism activities as an ongoing criminal investigation or for reasons of national security whereby the victim is continually violated over a period of many years by unimaginable psychological terrorism and often torture through directed energy weapons. Organized stalking consists of an elaborate slander and defamation campaign carried out by our law enforcement community whereby local concerned citizen types are recruited to aid in the constant invasion of privacy wherever a targeted individual travels in public, also referred to as the jail without bars. The victim is monitored 24-7, 365 days a year by the military, whether inside the presumed privacy of their home or out in public. During organized stalking campaigns, a targeted individual is usually surrounded by perpetrators wherever they go. Listening devices are used to overhear conversations. All electronic communications are closely monitored and possibly compromised by var various government agencies and contractors. And habits are meticulously analyzed in an elaborate, even absurd effort to ensure that perpetrators are kept one step ahead of a target individual's movement. Organized stalking is designed to make the victim feel trapped, powerless, 
overwhelmed, ultimately to question their own sanity, and hopefully to provoke an act of aggression, which can be used to incarcerate or institutionalize the victim. This is the face of 21st century entrapment and state-sponsored terrorism. The U.S. Air Force is silently torturing and murdering American citizens on domestic soil. In addition to complete violation of privacy from psychological warfare tactics, such as organized stalking, some targeted individuals are also subjected to an unrelenting torture campaign through the abuse and overexposure to directed energy weapons. A targeted individual subjected to this extreme state-sponsored terrorism tactic carried out by the U.S. Air Force is slowly poisoned by constant overexposure to electromagnetic radiation often occurring over many years while enduring torture-like symptoms from the radiation abuse. The participants in community harassment, more accurately described as domestic terrorism, are heavily populated by U.S. military, including the U.S. Air Force, pro-law enforcement, and right-wing fanatics. The U.S. Air Force and right-wing fanatics had joined forces to carry out domestic terrorism operations and are using their power and influence to stay above the law. Now for more details about these horrific and ongoing violations of rights, abuse of power, and state-sponsored terrorism being perpetrated by the U.S. Air Force against American civilians, this lady or person's website again is www dot tortured in America dot org. Now I'd like to do a little commentary on some of this. Um, U.S. Air Force going wrong. I think this originally started out as a military operation. Obviously it was used in the military. It was used in Iraq and Af Afghanistan. You had people in Iraq and Afghanistan that were in bunkers that turned over their weapons because people flying over in helicopters were beaming with these directed energy weapons or microwaves subliminals to make them come out and give up their weapons without a fight um, I don't know about anybody else I don't know how constitutional you are I don't know how American you are but in America, we stand for the ability to face our accusers. We have the right to face our accusers. Um, where I was going with this, it moved from military, in my opinion, to domestic locations. I think Homeland Security state and local police through all the funding for the anti-terrorism movement gained these capabilities supposedly to fight terrorism I know in Maryland we received millions of dollars in funding so that we could fight terrorism here in Maryland but obviously if they're torturing innocent American citizens they aren't fighting terrorism with it. If they're trying to break a person psychologically so that they may make them lose it to have them incarcerated, jailed, institutionalized, or even commit suicide. Um, hardly anti-terrorism movements. So I, I disagree that it was the Air Force going wild because in my case there's a lot of Navy personnel involved as well. So I would go to say it is not just the Air Force but military in general. That now includes domestic security. 
Homeland Security, State and Local Police. Since the directed energy weapon can use lily waves over electronic, uh, your electric lines outside your house, Comcast lines, your telephone lines. Obviously, it doesn't need to be satellite based, but it does need to be approved because not anybody can just go around doing this. Where else did I have an issue here? Anybody that is in question about electromagnetic radiation and the problems that it causes to someone's health, I would recommend you read the book The Body Electric. In it, the fellow writes about the effects of electromagnetic waves and radiation upon the human body. So basically anybody being constantly 24 hours a day every day of the year are being subjected to radiation. It would be like walking into an x-ray machine and never being able to leave. If anybody's ever had an, an x-ray, you know the people stand outside the x-ray machine that are not being x-rayed so they're not affected to their health. Can you imagine the person who is constantly stuck in the x-ray machine and cannot walk out or leave? The hazards to their health that has to come about. Um, the other issue, right-wing fanatics. Well, there are definitely some right-wing fanatics involved. But in my neighborhood, uh, I can walk any block I walk, and I have neighbors in almost every house that are participating. Hardly can I say all of them are right-wing fanatics. They're more along the lines of regular citizens, even here on YouTube, when I get people who are not victims of this and do not believe in it. It's not because they're right, right wing fanatics. It has to do with they are good people who have been led to believe they are fighting somebody or helping law enforcement to deal with somebody who is a bad character, a criminal, uh, a problem. They completely violate the privacy that a person has to the point that they are stealing your thoughts. Sort of what I call akin to brainwashing because they're trying to manipulate. They do behavior modification, but it isn't in an attempt to actually modify anybody's behavior. It's more an attempt to constantly keep an agitation and aggravation going so that there's a psychological issue looking like it's stemming from the person they're doing it to supports their theory that the person's a nut. I once, once listened to a Josh Tolley show in which an, an older lady, a lady older than myself, called in and explained she was a victim to this. And while he was very patient and kind and listened to her, he pretty much blew it off as a crazy old nut. I'm here to tell these people it's not a crazy old nut. None of these people are crazy old nuts. I am not a crazy old nut. Or a young one. Uh, I can't think of anything else that I wish to add at this moment. But anybody that's that has any question that such devices exist, there are professionals out there reporting on it. You have Nick Beggage, you have Bob Beck, you have Barry Trowers, and there are tons of resources on the internet by the government itself. 